Hello, my name is Taya Graham and this is Stephen Janis and we are your hosts of the Police Accountability Report and today we have some breaking news updates. We like to do follow-ups on stories we've done to let you know what happened to the people that we reported on and if we're able to get them results and fortunately we have some good news. The first case we'd like to update is the one of Daniel Alvarez. Stephen, can you give us a little background and share what the good news is? Well, we first encountered Daniel when he was sent us a video of him being pulled over by Los Angeles County Sheriff for supposedly going too over, far over a white line before a stop sign. And we did that video. And then after we published that video and got like a million views, then he was pulled over by the San Bernardino County Sheriff for another totally questionable violation, like changing lanes too close. The officer wrote him a $2,500 ticket. We did that story, we put that officer basically, so to speak, on blast. We put his video, his picture in there. And so when um, Daniel went to court to fight this ticket of $2,500, the officer didn't show. Well, that's an interesting coincidence that there were two poli two reports done on this police officer and he chose not to show. That is a very interesting coincidence and a happy one for yeah. Daniel. Yeah, I mean, you know, one would think maybe he had a sense of conscience because you could tell that the charges were pretty much bogus. But nevertheless, let's watch a little bit of his interaction and you can tell us. Yeah, you stopped because you cut that car off and you... No, I didn't. Yeah, you signaled and you made a lane change. Is your ID too, sir? Oh, no, sir. Sir? No, sir. It seems to me that you've seen me go by the stoplight. Ma'am, I need your ID too. And you stopped me based just because you've seen what I look like. The locals even like mentioned it yeah. too. The ones following us too. Are you on probation or parole? Nope. Mm -hmm. Are you on probation or parole? No. No, he's not. Are you on probation no. or parole? Okay, and you guys are refusing to give me your IDs, right? I thought that they didn't have to give you their ID if you just stopped me for. Well, I'm requesting, so are you going to give it to me or not? Can you call your lieutenant or sergeant here? I'm the sergeant. Okay. So as you can see, you know, he really didn't have any reason to write right. Daniel ticket, but I guess this is a good outcome number one. So our next update is on Otto the watchdog. Otto has unfortunately been separated from his children for almost three years because of felony camping charges that he received and he's also had to pay $300 a month for a monitoring device on his leg. So we have an update in this case. Um, so basically he was charged with felony camping after quote unquote a Karen call because he was camping with his children because he was facing a court case over the sign, holding a sign, a sign that some people found offended, offensive. They charged him with two felony counts of camping. Then you did a very emotional interview with Otto where he talked about being separated from his children. Uh, let's watch a little bit of, of the pain that this caused him. You know, my kids are out there and I know that they're going through some stuff and I can't even talk to them about it. Right? I can't even write it. I can't do nothing. I just have to sit there and watch. And um, I was afraid that they thought that I abandoned them. So thankfully, my family is pretty awesome and um, kept reminding them that daddy loves them. So when I finally got to see him again, that's that was a pretty big deal, man. But it shouldn't have never happened. You know, I, was, I wasn't doing anything at all. I was minding my own business, trying to do what, the, what they wanted me to do. I was trying to show up to court. And um, I just keep getting arrested on the way to court. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's, it's fucked up. But the good news is now that those charges of felony camping have been dropped. Yeah. He still has to fight the sign charge, but nevertheless, he, there is some light at the end of the tunnel and he was able to see his children again. Right, and the sign charge, I think, is a really clear-cut First Amendment case. Mm -hmm. So we think uh, Otto is going to have a bright future ahead, and we're very happy to share this news. So our third update for you is on Michelle Lucas, who is here in our home state of Maryland. Mm -hmm. Michelle Lucas is a pizza delivery woman and grandmother of four who was charged with allegedly passing a $100 counterfeit bill that she received from her workplace. So, Stephen, you have an update on this case. Well, as you know, the charges were dropped dropped against her after we investigated and got in touch with the public defender. They had already gotten her to plead guilty. I can barely, I, I, I lost, I had lost prior to this almost 80 pounds. I've gained most of it back. I'm crying constantly. I, I'm, I, I, I'm scared to take money. I don't even want to go to the store for, for nothing, for nobody, not for myself. I'm scared to spend even a dollar because what if it's counterfeit? 
As you know, Michelle Lucas was charged with two felony counts of counterfeit, um, passing counterfeit bills uh, from an incident involving an employee she worked with who gave her the money and she went and bought some liquor for him and then uh, police arrested her for some reason. And after we investigated, they dropped all the charges. But one of the things we talk about in our show is the long-term consequences. And the long-term consequences are that she would still have a record. And, you know, if she went for a job, you look up Michelle Lucas and you see that she was charged with two felony counts of counterfeiting. Well, the good news is now that they have accelerated her um, expungement and so those charges will soon be not on her record anymore. And that's wonderful news because charges like this can take up to three years to be expunged. So for them to be expedited so quickly is great news for her and for her family because we know this has put a lot of stress on her and a toll on her health. So we're very happy to have this good news about Michelle. So our last and final update is on the case of Kelvin Sewell, a former police chief in Pocomoke City, Maryland, who was charged for not charging someone who had hit two parked cars. Now these two parked cars were hit, there was property damage, the insurance paid for it, but he was charged for not pursuing charges against a Pocomoke City resident, which is sort of unusual. So Stephen, can you give us an update in this case and to give us an idea of what the good news is? Well, first of all, let's remember that Kelvin was a police chief of Pocomoke City. He implemented a community policing, making his officers get out of the car and walk. Um, you know, he was fired by an all-white city council, well, nearly all-white, excuse me, and um, you know, he filed a discrimination lawsuit and then they brought these charges against him. Right, the state after the discrimination lawsuit. Right, the state prosecutors brought these charges. A very controversial case. Many people said it was retaliation. Um, he's been convicted twice down in Worcester County by a nearly all white jury, and he's appealed the case. The latest appeal, the Court of Special Appeals, has said that the court must hold a prosecutorial misconduct hearing, um, and Kelvin must get a chance to have that hearing to see if prosecutors, or to determine, excuse me, if prosecutors acted with you know some sort of malice or or corruption, corrupt intent. And basically, which is kind of interesting, it's like flip the script on on them. Basically, what they're alleging is that a witness who was the key witness against Kelvin, a, a woman named Tanya Barnes, who said he was behaving unusually that night, had recanted to Kelvin and said they've been putting pressure on her to testify against him. So this is a big deal. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if prosecutors are going to go forward with it or if, if even Kelvin will pursue it. But really, at this point, you know, the court has said there's enough evidence to warrant a hearing about prosecutorial misconduct. And a point you make is a really good point. The reason this case is so important, besides all the background in Pocomoke, is that they're basically saying that any time a cop shows up anywhere, right. they got to arrest somebody. Absolutely. If there's the smallest hint. And, you know, I, think, I don't think there's anyone in this country that wants every cop following the letter of the law every single day. Things are bad enough as right. they are. I mean, if every interaction had to end in arrest in order to protect the officer, you can see how bad things would right. get, how quickly. Right. That's why officer discretion is important. Right. So this case is really fundamental. It could be case law. You know, every cop could be watching and saying, you know what, if I don't arrest this person every time something happens, you know, exactly. that has a little slightest whiff of maybe being improper. So, you know, it's a very scary case in some ways. So it's very important that we keep following up. But right now we'll have to see what happens. We'll update you if we hear anything new. And just a note, this is a testament to our dedication because we have been following this case for five years. So when we say we follow up and do our homework, we are not kidding. So we hope you enjoyed these updates. We know you care about what happens to the people that we interview. You care about them like we do. And we're so happy to have some good news to give to you. So I'm Taya Graham. I'm Stephen Janis. <laughs> and we're the Police Accountability Report. Please be safe out there.